Right folks, uh, interesting time ahead at Koi Wholesale. Uh, today we're actually going to be focusing on a new selection video, so the start of a new journey. We featured Okawa Shiro Utsori before, but we're going to be sort of right back at the beginning with different version of growing. This is going to be a winter grow out on these, so it's going to be quite a few areas uh, it covers. We are getting close to the stage of actually completing uh, some of this year's grow out videos as we come around to harvest time. But this is the start of a new one. This batch of fish are technically uh, next month going to be turning Nisai. And I think this is address addresses uh, some points that we might find interesting. So as these turn Nisai, I mean, we're probably going to find these are anywhere between 15 and 20 centimetres today, which is in the small Nisai uh, bracket. And I think for some guys or somebody uh, in, within the industry, that's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a myth that these fish, once you've got a new site at that size, these fish can't grow. What really matters here is, is the circumstances behind what's happening. So these fish came to me, I think it was April time. Uh, and because of lack of pond space, they were sat in one of the QT tanks for a really long time. So really not growing. In fact, they were, we were losing quite a bit of mass because we couldn't feed them enough. When I eventually <coughs> freed up this pond, the 1500 gallon pond, got them moved. I think we're around four, 450 keys or something like that. And we've done really well. I mean, what they've actually done so far, they were about 12 to 15 cm. So like I say, we'll, we'll get the exact sizes when we go through them shortly. Uh, but what's gonna happen with these now, once they're done, we're just preparing one of the three and a half thousand gallon ponds where these are gonna go for the winter and basically have what they should have had this summer over the winter so what we'll find is uh, although we're talking this eye we would say technically the fish are 18 months old so by the time these fish hit say 24 months old next year if we're still growing them by then what will be will probably be on par with where they should have been just at this time of the year so nothing's actually been lost because the fish that have been grown over the summer are going to be having more of a resting and conditioning period uh, these are just going to get on and, and get cracking and growing in that same time period so yeah, uh, probably a different concept there, but just to highlight that the fact of because they're this high and that side, it doesn't mean these fish aren't going to grow. You've got to look at the circumstances behind it and what's going on, and that lost growth for this summer can easily be uh, recovered and, like I say, be on par with a 24-month old fish uh, from this summer. So we'll see that. We'll document it as we go along. But today is the first official selection. Uh, since they got moved in here, we didn't do anything. Uh, other than getting shifted over. So since they've been in, they've been QT, kept in the QT tank for a long time, moved here, started pushing the growth, and now we're gonna get the first selection and uh, yeah, see where we head. So let's get stuck into it. So uh, yeah, looking at these already guys, uh, impressive growth given again, the stocking level. The, what you will see in here, oh, mental as always. Uh, what you will see in here is that the water, I mean, this is already a, a much lighter shade of green than this has been. This whole pond has been green most of the year, to be honest. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on with it, even with the UV on. It's just constantly struggling, but I have no issues with that. Fish are still performing. The last batch of fish that were in here, uh, the skin was just insane when we pulled them out, which is normally the case. And yeah, I mean, they're looking at these now, they're, they're looking in great condition. So certainly not doing them any harm that's for sure so yeah one my well, scoop by scoop we're going to get them out in the bowls now uh, go through and sort out what's going to be prepped up and released for sale and and what's going to be uh yeah put into the growing ponds and what we'll see in here uh more than likely is a lot of these have got the sumi down a fair bit at the minute which is not a problem uh, okawa shiro that's normally the case but uh, over time that just starts coming up it's very reliable sumi uh, in the uk i found that year on year uh, when, when it comes to getting the sumi out so should never be deterred by that good sumi quality always takes a bit of time to to progress so main criteria as ever body's going to be a big part of the selection just assessing the overall quality uh, of the body of the sumi quality where we can if it's not really there using things like any motoguro in the peck or any sumi that is pre present to gauge the quality and uh, and yeah uh, pretty much ignoring what the sumi pattern's actually doing at the minute because they're not progressed enough to to start assessing it so that's the best way to ensure we end up with the right quality fish when they get bigger so uh as ever with the okawa shiro he does make very nice uh, ginrin shiro as well and what I actually found last year, although typically, you know, Ginrin will tend to struggle to keep pace 
uh, with a normal sort of like, wagoi type shiro. Uh, the Ginrin really did do surprisingly well and, and really did keep up with the pack and the Ginrin quality of a Kawa shiro. I mean, you can see it here, look. Like, really is top draw what the guy does with him. You can see here, look, big, big body on this one, just the same as the others. They really don't struggle, so it's nice to kind of have that without the compromise. Um, so yeah, you will see straight away we've got a mix of sizes and my eye initially is going to be drawn to the bigger bodied fish. And I'm not just keeping it because it is bigger or bigger bodied, uh, but naturally well, I'm looking to push growth here. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. So that's likely the first fish I'll start assessing and then work my way through the pack. Anything too small as we can see here already look so. I mean, that's a great little piece there. Absolutely stunning Chiro. But when we're com comparing it already against the likes of that or that, for example, there's just no point putting this fish in the pond with that one because it's never going to compete. In order to try and maximise what that might do, it needs to go in a pond with similar sized fish so it can have a chance of catching up. Can get some growth on a fish like that. Uh, it's just this environment and the minute is not conducive to... Uh, allowing it to to thrive so get on with the selection here and like i say at the end we will bring them together and look at some of the, the highlights uh, before we get released into the new pond wow straight away there this is something i learned from the last time with these uh looking at body deformities in them so straight away this is an appealing fish in regards to this because see a lot of body power but there's actually too much and when i look straight away i could see it looks a little bit too short that's because there's actually a deformity here can see it at the peduncle it's basically squashed and nipped uh, at that point there you can see not the most obvious uh, but I could just tell there was something not right there and I'm not sure whether you will pick it up but just missing that length because there's a bit too much of a hump here as it goes into the back and that's just something that's going to play out more and more as that gets bigger so shame it's a really good piece but yeah, with a deformity like that it's, it's never going to get anywhere or, or hold any sort of value should i say probably what you'll find is that fish even looking at it it'll still grow at a, a quite an impressive rate it's just from my side investing the time and resources into it it's not going to gain any value so unfortunately that has to uh, to go at this point absolutely incredible fish there that the quality of that is amazing really is i mean look at that memoir on the head just a cracking piece but again, it's just not competing on the size, unfortunately. That is the sort of fish, however, if I can find space for it in another pond where it could compete, I definitely would keep it because the quality is immense. So if we look in this bowl now, we can see that I've uh, leveled it out to what I consider a competitive and fair size range for these growing into the new environment. So that's not that I'm keeping all these, it's just easier for selection purposes to get the stuff I know, regardless of the quality, is not big enough to compete out of here just so I can focus on what's in this bowl now to take away what I want uh, and go from there. It's just when the bowl's really full, you just need to give yourself some, some focus and that's the reason why I've done it that particular way. So we have uh, spoken about Shiro Sori quite a lot and you can see in here, there's not many of these sort of popping pattern up more finished uh, examples and these are a lift that you know this is not actually particularly good quality sumi it's quite superficial and there's not a lot of depth to it therefore even that's not a fish uh, that i'll be keeping uh, at this time and yeah one of the issues in getting this variety that or the example of this variety what you want is when they are of quality and got all the pattern and all the skin and everything going on because they are, in, in all reality, in a numbers side of it, quite rare beasts, they do command quite a price, and then that becomes off-putting for a lot of people. So it is a case of you need to be taking a bit of chance and a bit of risk with Shiro Sori, and it really can pay off. You know, if you're looking at this just as an example, you know, what we're seeing here in that is a, is a really powerful uh, Ginrin Shiro Sori. We can see, I'm, I'm not saying it's the perfect eyes, but you can see there's so much in the head pattern to happen here. All this blue, grey area where the zoom is sat in the body, more than likely is going to come up. I've said it more and more times, you know, that's another good example, an even better example there, because that is a really superb fish. I mean, the bone structure, the quality, I mean, look at all the zoom lined under the belly already. And there, there's so much to happen with that fish there. 
all it needs is time. There will be progress, there will be massive change, but you've got to give it the time and give it the chance. Yes, it's not an attractive looking fish now, but I guarantee you what tends to happen, if you see a fish like that available in a shop with those kind of qualities, buy it and take the chance. Uh, I know what's likely going to happen and therefore that's why that's a, a really top piece for me to be keeping and growing on. But that's something where if you want to get a win and you can get a win with this variety, probably pick that up because a lot of people will be overlooking it and ignoring it uh, in them sort of retail environments. So if you're seeing one like that with these kind of qualities, get it and take a chance because you know I, I guarantee you most of the time you will get some progress and some change where it kind of works in your favour rather than waiting for the fish that then become already more attractive looking, have a lot more pattern going on, uh, where you are ultimately going to pay a premium and, and pay a tax on those fish. So, I mean, for the price of the one, often you could possibly buy two, three, or maybe more, uh, grow them on and, and end up with more nice fish out of it at the end. So it's the way I'm looking in, it's the way I look at Shearer Utsori, and it's the way that you get success and in the end, get a really nice looking pond of fish. Uh, towards the end of this video as well, there's actually a couple of examples that I grew on from last year's batch that we covered uh, that will pop in the bowl to, to have a look at just so you can see how they progress because one example, if we check back, uh, really didn't have a lot going for it at the time. So, yeah, we'll do that. You can see that fish there. I don't know if we'll get this on the camera, but just checking there's, for all these little deformities that can pick up. We'll see the head on this one. You can see it nipping around where the skull sort of meets and there's a big dent there. A big dent that side as well. All these things to, to look for because that could quite easily have missed. You spend all this time investing in that fish, getting the size for it to have very little commercial value. I mean, there's one that just makes you smile a little bit. As much as uh, I say I have no issues at all with the whiter ones, when you do get one that's kind of all there, a bit popping, it all comes together, head pattern, nice flow on the body, they really are a hard variety to compete with. And that's, uh, yeah, got it all going on. Not only has it got the structure, it's got everything there. I think interestingly as well, people do worry about this uh, kind of shear up, sorry, being this developed worrying about them being too finished too soon. It's a little bit of a myth that because it depends on the sort of sumi. So what's likely to happen with this fish is that we've not got the full sumi depth yet. I can see there's quality to the sumi, looking at the Motogoro and what's going on. Uh, but it's not got, we can see here, look, it's a little bit sort of translucent in the scales in areas. That's because this has still got to thicken. So although the pattern's not likely to change, what will happen is uh, that colour will thicken and it will get deeper and more intense and more lustrous now as it gets bigger. But that's the only like the, the sort of main thing we're likely to see happen uh, with that fish. But yeah, cracking to see it. See that little one? There were fish in there. There was fish in there that kind of size when they started. Just to give you an idea, you can see the other ones around it. What's actually happened in that pond? In those, those 12 and 1500 gallon ponds I've got in there never cease to amaze me with what they can actually produce and do with such the most basic of systems. I mean, don't forget, they've only got a brush chamber uh, and a fluid K1 chamber. Small amount of water uh, and producing results like this, it's, it's really awesome. Just saw that fish, absolutely inspired by it. Looking that amazing bone structure to it amazing pattern see the great skin quality it's got i could just feel on my finger underneath that the uh, the, the pelvic fins didn't feel right and sure enough look they're heavily twisted we just see here uh, more disappointment <laughs> another ginrin just looking at that then i was in awe of again the quality bone structure everything i could see on the top of the fish Potentially nice underlaying sumi pattern, good sumi quality. And then just as I was checking underneath, you can see it's covered in secondary benny. Which again, same problem. Uh, fish like that cannot command the value that it would need to. Uh, therefore, it, it can't stay. What a shame. Just as I'm going through these, noticing a lot 
certainly the bigger ones got great body height to them and i think body height is probably something we've not discussed all that much but it's a massively important part of the bone structure because as the weight is coming on the fish we need to get it proportionately across the whole body and ultimately if there's not a lot of height that weight's going to be forced down onto the rest of the body and potentially more underneath and that's when you start creating that kind of rugby ball shape that we don't find appealing and uh, yeah i think it's probably one of the most important parts of the bone structure all in all especially if we want to get fish big because as they get big more and more of that volume uh, is coming and uh, it's ultimately more and more weight therefore if it's not got anywhere you know if it's not got a lot of room on the body to go it is going to go underneath and completely destroy the body shape then at, at that point I think just another one I want to touch on is these really kind of white example of shear oats, sorry, because these are an interesting one. With this one, I can see a little bit of sumi and there's dustings around the skin here, which is reassuring, but there's been others much whiter than that. Now they're an interesting proposition because as I'm looking at them, I know more than likely they're gonna do something. We just don't know exactly what. So for me with those ones, if the body checks out uh, and the skin, you know, the kind of quality of the shiroji checks out, I'm going to keep them most of the time because I'm expecting something to happen. In most cases, it does. We just don't know what. So if I was to reject that because it was plain white, I'm ultimately giving somebody what could be a, a serious weapon of a fish uh, as it gets a bit bigger. So sort of that koi game. It could be that I invest, you know, six months, maybe more in them and they don't actually really come to anything. But it could just be that one in every 10 that, that really turns into a rock star and we won't want to miss it. That's another one that's got me smiling. That is an absolute rocket. Just wow. Too much more to say about that. Little miniature perfection. Pattern skin, a motoguro in the fins. Got everything going on. Killer pattern. A little bit there just to finish and really tap that on off. What an insane piece interesting part here is that is going to go into my so-called reject bowl and I, I say that quite sarcastically because obviously it's not competing size wise so these little fish there's quite a lot of them there's been giving me quite a conundrum at the minute but we'll we'll get to that towards the end of the video so here we have it uh, i've just been through the net of my current keepers and uh, just to pull a few bits out to look at in in more detail uh, quick measure up as well, so this particular bowl is hitting 22 up to sort of 23 and a half cm which is already quite remarkable, I mean we're talking you know some fish potentially nearly doubling in size, uh, others having grown considerable amount, like I said these were 12 to 15 cm at the time of them going in here and pretty skinny which you can see is not the case now, they've bodied up really well, they've gained considerable growth and I'm, I'm really really happy with what I'm looking at. Uh, there's a few different examples, I'm not saying these are necessarily the best, just some with some standout characteristics to sort of discuss uh, in more detail here. Mix of the, the normal type and the, the Ginrin as well. So yeah, uh, you can probably see it's a bit of a mixed bag what we're looking at, but all fish I'm, I'm really confident in for the future uh, on delivering some nice uh, Nissai come sort of the end of next spring. So uh, yeah, where to start? I suppose one uh, that's kind of booked my rules a little bit in this one, the Ginrin Shiro. You can see it's it's a, a fair bit smaller than the others, although it does look like it's got a fairly strong structure, just not as powerful as the others. It's got a good head on it, hoping it can catch up a bit when it gets in an environment that's less competitive and there's a lot more space, but it's a very hard fish to ignore when you look at it. I mean, the skin, absolutely gleaming. Already, what Sumi we've got up, we can see the quality of it is just immense. It's got nice refined uh, kiwa to that sumi as well, what is up already. You can see it down that side as well, nice marizomi kiwa forming to it. Ginring quality is insane, it's got lovely motogoro. You can see nice pattern potential in it, it just really ticks all the boxes. So I couldn't ignore it, got to give it some chance uh, and see where it heads and see if it can catch up. But that's a really, really exciting prospect, that one. Uh, the sort of other end of the scale there with that one, a normal Shiro here, which I'm sure this is not going to get uh, pulses racing for many people. But 
super powerful body structure to this one we can see it's got the height i've discussed strong head good length it's got sort of everything going on in that respect uh lovely shiroji quality throughout which is really important so it's a little bit of a gamble but what we're looking at if you can see it, is them blue gray areas uh under the skin here on the head i can already see a little bit of sumo just on the back of the head there sort of breaking through and uh, it's probably just going to be a matter of time. I can see Sumi below the lateral starting to come look. Sort of like that dusty black area. Uh, I have all confidence this Sumi is going to pop. Looking at what I can see happening, Sumi there, look. Uh, I think there's going to be a radical transformation in this one, to be honest with you. It's not going to be the easiest fish to track. But it'll be nice to see in six months' time sort of where that one is at. Because I do believe with those qualities... All it needs is the sumi to start happening and we're going to be onto a really, really strong piece there. Uh, then you've got the sort of hybrid examples of that, somewhere a little bit in between in this fish. Again, we've got a really strong, powerful body. There we can see that structurally. Shiroji is really good. What I like about this one is we can see the underlying sumi pattern, which is exciting. Uh, you can see it could be a really interesting pattern as well. But it's nice to see some of the sumi already progressed and get to see the quality of it. If we look at that there on the dorsal, absolutely balmy how good that is. And a little hack there is, is using Motogoro in the fin to sort of gauge the quality when it's there. And you can see it's really, really lustrous and shiny. So happening underneath the lateral, there's a lot already happening on that fish. And again, I think we're going to have a really prominent piece eventually. Then again, just getting a little bit further down that line, sort of like this fish. Again, bone structure checks out really well. It's got a lot more sumi there already. Uh, lots more to come as well. Hard to know exactly where that's going to end up. I think we're going to have quite a heavily sumi shiro, which is nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's areas we can see up will be defined shiroji in amongst all that underlying and, and current sumi there. But again, I mean, just look at the quality of that sumi that's up already. It's excellent. You know, I am a huge fan of the Akawa Shiro's. I find them very reliable uh, with the Sumi more than anything. Great, great quality to them. I was actually uh, there at Akawa the first year he spawned these and they were impressive back then and he just seems to have gone from strength to strength and it was, it was a while ago, but he's done a, a cracking job in developing them. Uh, we then move on to this one that we already kind of looked at before in the video, but really more finished example really nice to see it's got a cracking pattern to it really has really elegant flow nice head pattern got the motogoro it's got everything going on with that fish and i think all that's going to happen with this one i don't expect any change moving forwards it should grow well i think small elements of the pattern like this these side elements of the sumi as they sort of lift a little bit it'll become more prominent uh, but the sumi is just going to thicken it's not got huge amounts of depth to it at the moment although it is nice quality, but we're just going to get more thickness and more luster to that as it ages. And uh, yeah, could be a, a hell of a piece. And we sort of move on back to the Ginrin. I really do think this is potentially going to be a, a top piece as well. I can see a really elegant flow to the potential Sumi pattern throughout it. There's loads happening below the lateral line already on this fish. I don't think it's going to be long before we start seeing more of that on the body. You can see there's the first signs of the head Sumi in the mouth as well so i think it's a relatively safe bet just a matter of time but just look at that gin ring quality this is a cow we're doing an amazing job of these just insane so consistent even right down below the lateral last scales amazing amazing quality to them and then uh, yeah to go on again you might be looking at this fish uh, and thinking it's possibly going to be too heavy too dark what i'm seeing here is a fish that's probably not going to change all that much might get some increased shiroji in that area actually as it grows but i'd expect this pattern just to hold and the shiroji elements in amongst it to actually become more prominent and more refined as that gets bigger so time will tell uh, but it is again nice to see them more finished ones amongst them they certainly are inspiring when you do catch them and uh, yeah probably one one more just to uh, to look at because again i'm just it's not got the most powerful bone structure in here it's not a bad bone structure but I was just admiring the shiroji quality of that fish when we selected it and it's again got really refined sumi a lot going on in the sumi pattern you can't see underlying sumi but this below the lateral is likely to sort of work its way up and creep a little bit you can see sumi there so it's going to be a lighter colored fish but 
quality is just insane. I mean, look at that Sumi on the head, it's immense. So there we have it with those ones. Uh, really excited to get them growing. Not got a final count yet, but looking at it, the pond's going to look relatively uh, lightly stocked uh, compared to my usual stocking levels anyway. So we can probably expect some sort of hard and fast growth coming from these and yeah, get plenty of body. They're going to go on to a diet of Saki Akari growth. That's what they've been on. Uh, they've been on the three mil pellet, uh, sorry, the small pellet, two to two and a half mil so far. Uh, I might even possibly continue that for a couple of weeks because I do tend to find I can really push the growth a bit harder because I think it improves digestive efficiency with the smaller pellet. So, uh, yeah, probably up until they're hitting sort of 25 cm average, I'm going to keep them on that and then switch over to the medium pellet and see where we get. So next up, we're going to look at some of the small fish uh, that are causing me a bit of a conundrum and uh, probably make a decision on what we're going to do with them. Right, folks, my conundrum. Uh, yeah, I mean, just take a look at this bowl. This is not uh, my usual rejects. Uh, I say again that quite sarcastically. The only reason these are in here, and I say conundrum is, you can see the quality of these fish is absolutely top, really top notch. And it's only because they're not competing, and I don't believe they're strong enough to compete on size in that environment that they're going to go into therefore what i would normally do in this instance is just create another pond a smaller pond and probably keep these among with some of the others that aren't quite you know showing sumi as strongly yet but have great potential and grow them in an environment that's more conducive to getting the best results from from these fish so it's not that these won't grow they've just been in a pond small pond with over 400 fish and some very big dominant fish uh, that's got got you know the share of the food yeah enjoy these uh, enjoy i hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, we'll be bringing some updates again uh, as soon as we can